Greetings to you in the name of the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, we thank and bless your name for this moment. We thank you, Lord, for the great and wonderful things you've wrought in our lives. Thank you for your word you've brought to us at this time. Lord, we ask that you open our understanding, teach us your will, and help us to be doers of this word. Thank you because we believe you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. We are considering the topic, no turning back, no turning back. Our text is taken from Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of his father, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the element of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because he has sons, God had sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, therefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather, and known of him, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly element, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. Ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. A key verse is in verse 9. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather, unknown of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly element, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. Robert Robinson was a wild young man who came to repentance after listening to George Whitefield's sermon. He later became a pastor and composed a couple of hymns, particularly the famous Come Thou Font of Every Blessing, which was written in 1757. Later in life, Robinson wondered from the Lord and apparently felt he could not return. But years later, he was riding in a stage couch with a young woman who did not know who he was, but quoted the hymn, Come thou font, to him. He replied, Madam, I am the poor, unhappy man who wrote that hymn many years ago, and I would give a thousand worlds if I had them, to enjoy the feelings I had then. It is said that she responded by telling him, Sir, the streams of mercy are still flowing. From the text, Paul the Apostle warned the Galatian believers of the folly of turning back to the superstitions and sinful traditions and beliefs of their society. He reminded them of the benefit of the new birth and the privileges it confers. They stood the danger of losing everything should they willfully return to the observance of these months, times, and years of the hidden life. The devil uses the tools of persecution and persuasion to bring back the unsuspecting believer into his old life, especially those who just came into the faith. The traditionalists and the nominal Christians are the preferatures used by the devil to pull down true believers. They tell them to relax their Christian convictions and add some unnecessary and unbiblical traditions and superstitions to their faith. Sooner or later, 
believers who fall victim of their wives and caprices return to worldly pagan ceremonies, lust of the flesh and worldliness, thought for the day. Don't go back to your own vomit again. Amen. The days we are in are referred to in scripture as the last days in fact the bible says that in a time like this in the days like this perilous time shall come in first timothy first timothy i want to read there from chapter 4 verse 1 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times in the days where we are in some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron in these latter times in these latter days some shall depart from the faith matthew matthew i want to read from chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 i will read there from verse number 12 matthew i want to read from chapter 24 verse 12 and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved these are the latter times these are the last days and the love of many are waxing cold those who once knew the lord those who once stood for the lord today they are gradually drifting away from their conviction they are gradually going back to their own vomit many are leaving the faith many are massively embracing the idol worshiping they once rejected many are massive embracing the worldly pleasures they once rejected the devil has gone out with great wrath revelation chapter 12 verse 12 tells us he has gone out with great wrath deceiving many because he knoweth that he had but a short time time is short Satan knows this. The believers should have known this, but many believers are ignorant of this fact. No wonder they are dangling in sin. They are swimming and dancing in sin. They are embracing secret sin in their life because they think they have a long time. Satan knew he have but a short time. No wonder he's deceiving many people today. He doesn't want to get to hell just by himself. Remember hell fire was prepared for the devil and all his angels but man that does the bidding of satan man that behaves like the devil will also find themselves in hell satan doesn't want to go to hell but all by himself just alone and that's why he's going about deceiving many people today he recruits false prophets he recruits oddly worldly agents to to ensure that his desire of making sure people goes with him to hell is accomplished the bible say because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall was go thank god he never said the love of all there is still few that will stand there is still few that will endure till the very end i pray you will be among those that will endure till the very end trials may come temptations may come challenges may come difficulties may come but you must make up your mind i have laid my hands on the plow i will not look back i spoke to a young man just yesterday this is a man that have once stood for the lord he has once served the lord given opportunity to even stand on the pulpit to declare the words of the lord or suddenly because of a particular challenge in his life because of a particular delay in his life 
he wrote to me when I asked after his faith and how he's doing spiritually. He told me, he said, well, I'm no longer for this, your Jesus. Jesus has disappointed me. I, I, I waited for him. I trust in him. I thought he's going to intervene in these particular issues in my life. But this other man, his own power seems to be stronger. He has controlled my life over the years. This other man, this other man, he has so much used evil powers to control me. I've been praying to your Jesus. I've been talking to your Jesus to redeem, to deliver me from the hand of this man. But it seems as if, well, he's no longer answering my prayers. He's not delivering me. So I have returned back to that idol. I've returned back to that man. I told him, my brother, what is separating you from the Lord? Look at what Paul the Apostle said. Who shall separate us from the love of the Lord? Who? Try us maybe there. Brother, you are allowing this thing to take you away from the Lord. The Bible says on the last days, in the latter times, many will depart from the faith. You are already fulfilling the scripture. Return to the Lord before it is too late. I told him, gave him passages of the Bible, reminded him the need for him to go back to the Lord, the need for him to embrace the Savior. Whatever Satan give you today, he will take much more for you tomorrow. There is no repentance in the grave. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If you linger like Lot's wife lingered, she became a pillar of sorts. If you lingered, maybe you will say, well, when I get what I'm looking for, I will now return to the Lord. Satan is wiser than you. He will not allow you to have such opportunity. Now that you are still young in that deception, now that it is still early enough, go to Calvary, embrace the Savior before it becomes too late. About 200 years ago, there was a great revival in Wales, England. As a result of this, many missionaries from England came to Northeast India to spread the gospel. The region was known as Assam and comprised hundreds of tribes. The tribal community were quite primitive and aggressive. The tribesmen were also called headhunters. Because of this social custom, which required the male members of the community to collect as many heads as possible. In fact, a man's strength and ability to protect his wife was assessed by the number of heads he had collected. These are heads of humans. Therefore, a youth of marriageable age will try and collect as many heads as possible and hang them on the walls of his house. The more heads a man had, the more eligible he was considered. Into this hostile community came this group of Welsh missionaries spreading the message of love, peace, and hope of Jesus Christ. Naturally, they were not welcomed. However, one Welsh missionary finally succeeded in converting a man, his wife, and his two children. This man's fate proved contagious, and many villagers began to accept Christianity. Angry, the village chief summoned all the villagers. He then called the family who had first converted to renounce their faith in public or face execution. Moved by the Holy Spirit, the man sung his reply. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Enraged at the refusal of the man, the chief ordered his archers to arrow down the two children 
and they did as both boys lay switching at the floor with blood all over them they just died at the spots the chief asked will you deny your fates you have lost both your children already you will lose your wife too but the man replied again singing the more he sang the more the chief gets infuriated this time he sang though no one joins me still i will follow no turning back no turning back the chief was full of fury and ordered his wife to be arrowed down and she was in a moment she joined her two children in death the man was given the last opportunity to deny christ of face execution and his song the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back he was killed but his death brought real conviction and salvation upon the chief who was surprised that someone could die for his faith in a god who he cannot see that brought repentance to him and the villagers what shall separate you from the love of god some because of marriage they deviate from the lord some because of a job they deviate from the lord some claim to be suffering and jesus had not intervened in their case they depart from the lord who shall separate you from the love of god don't let the scripture be fulfilled in your little scripture in matthew chapter 24 verse 12 don't allow it to be fulfilled in your life hold on to your conviction you have laid your hands on the plow my brother my sister you vomited those sins in the past don't go back to your vomit hold on to the lord embrace the savior hold on to him ask him for grace to stand even in a time like this is grace is sufficient for you the lord will keep you from falling and he will present you faultless to his glory in jesus name open your mouth at this time begin to pray talk to the lord lord i come to you i ask you hold my hands lest i fall give me the grace to stand in a time like this open your mouth and talk to the lord there are challenges yes but you need to stand challenges may be there. delays may be the problems here and there but remember the lord is coming again and once we are raptured those problems will cease to exist once we go to meet the lord in the air once we be with the lord in heaven those problems will cease to exist but if you deny the lord today you will live to regret all through eternity say lord give me the grace to stand strengthen my backbone to stand even in a time like this no turning back i have decided to follow jesus in jesus name i pray father lord i pray the grace to stand the power to stand the conviction to stand give unto every one of us that nothing will separate us from your love those who have deviated i pray your mercy will locate them and you will bring them to the fold once again in jesus name thank you father in jesus name i pray amen